But now they're going head to head. It's going to be Kiwi and Pelka who switching off of the Sora. I think they want to go with, you know, they're really respecting their opponents. I mean, you definitely should. You saw what Yoda Cage and Beast were doing earlier on. So don't mess around with the day eight Sora or whatever it is. Instead, uh, commit hard to just trying, uh, just trying with the team that you've proven has worked. Yeah, and I, knowing that how much Yoda, Cage, and Beast are able to ride with momentum as most Philly players are able to do. Like, if you give them an inch, they're taking a mile. So, don't, don't give them an inch. And that's what we, that's what a Pac-Man and what Snake can do extremely well. They're going to have to play through a literal minefield in some cases in order to find their hits. And we can see the damage differential right at the start. Yeah. I can't wait to see Charizard get... That was an amazing upbeat. Wow. He uh, died at 77. Or he died. Really? Kiwi. Yeah, that was Kiwi dying at 77 to I that upbeat. That. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that's what. Okay, so like those, in Red general, those multi hit but... moves scale really well with rage, which is why a high percent beast is a horrifying thing to face down. Nonetheless, Yellow Team still looking pretty good here because Pelka taking the role of a stock tank. It's something that, especially in doubles, Snake excels at. Already he can kind of hang back. He's also heavy and his. He's just hard to kill. He doesn't put himself in situations where he's going to be dying very early. Yeah, and I like how Polka doesn't try to overcomplicate things either. He knows what Snake's good at. He knows that these grenades into aerials are super clean. Snake has a billion one ways to utilize his tech, but sometimes all you need is the good stuff. All you need is one B-reverse to get out of danger. And he was doing that incredibly well as he finds the up tilt. But Speaking of bread and butter, Snake's up has been yeah. doing it for a while. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just waiting for uh, Charizard to get stickied, and then he goes for up throw, and then he blows up the stick the sticky. It's not going to happen, but I'm still waiting for it. But what if, right? What if? <laughs> right. Imagine if he grabbed his teammate by accident and went for up throw. Oh, that would be a record. Anyway, <laughs> getting into the actual real-life match that we have in front of us, Yoda Cage just hanging on by a thread here, 179%. Bowser Jr. can definitely survive, especially when the fact that he takes minus uh, damage and knockback when you connect on the cart means that he can kind of play a specific way to not get hit by kill moves quite so much. We do actually have even stocks, although the percentages are not evil even in the least. And if Beast drops right here, that's going to be it. He's surviving, but not by much. There's a lot of, lot of, uh, of ground that Red Team needs to make up right here because Kiwi and Pelko are just that playing so fantastically. clutch. While it is unfortunate to see Beast drop to the uh, bell, uh, to a bell conversion. That was an incredible play from Yoda Cage, able to blow up the Cypher and give himself a fighting chance here. Trying to utilize the awkward moveset of Morton and see how he can fare and, and separating both of these players who do want the space to set up their own uh, their own traps. Maybe he's got a chance here to fight 1v1 and fight through them both, but Pelka is not giving him an inch. Oh my. You know, I was about to say, like, imagine how, like, already it's so hard to get off Legend versus one of these characters. Imagine actually doing it versus both, but he doesn't have to do it versus both because Pelka all on his own is just ledge trapping. He was just hanging out with him and being like, yeah, I don't even need to cover any extra options. You're good. Uh, the roll was a little bit too short as he comes in with she's the attack. Him. Oh, she's sticky right now. By design, oh man. Is it still on? Is it still on Kiwi? Or did it transfer? We'll have to see when the button flashes. Oh, oh it, it fell off. Ah, <laughs> come on. Uh, unfortunate Snake thing says, I really like that Yoda Cage is still like throwing it out here. At the very least, you're pushing them to go to extend just that little bit further while also trying to hunt down a suddenly extremely evasive Morton. I mean, the yeah. cart jumps, the, the double jumps and disadvantage holding down while rising to, to add that little bit of extra pressure. There's so yeah. much in Yoda Cage's bag of tricks at Prolific Labber. <laughs> How's it going there, bud? <laughs> 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 the optimal he, coverage. He See, is, I, like, I he was gonna, is uh, chilling right here. Hold which, on a second. Like, gonna, I, I really did think it's gonna be like, it's gonna be impossible to get up from ledge against both of them. But it's just impossible to get up from ledge against one of them. The other one's just like at hey. both times they're just like chilling. Uh, I will say I, that you know Yoda Cage hung in there, really fought to the bitter end, and one advantage, like one benefit to doing that. Yeah, I don't worry. I saw it. Um, yeah, that's that's what he's, he was his, doing. He's doing eye, his job. His eye is not on his character. His eye is specifically on that C4 because <laughs> as soon as Yoda Cage does anything, 
which Kiwi was doing a great job of forcing him off ledge, most importantly, he, that C4 was going to get detonated. But Kiwi yeah. was able to close out the, the game regardless, and good stuff yeah. to her. Okay, I'm going to go maximum analysis here. They specifically... Maximum overdrive. <laughs> they specifically only went for those kind of, like, didn't actually double double ledge trap because they wanted to preserve that information for the rest of the games in this set. Hey, it's, it's a long set. Doubles can feel long and short at the same time as we're starting off on a smaller stage. And I really like this pick from Yoda Cajun Beast. They're saying, okay, if we're going to fall into Snake's explosions all the time because that just ends up what happens, everybody's getting hit by it. Everybody's dying, everybody's blowing up, and we're Ooh. not letting you survive. Okay. Speaking of everybody getting blow up, it's actually Yoda Cage. He almost died to that beast back air. But surviving is not... I mean, he's surviving right now, but look at this. Both of them deep in the red, and it's actually going to be Beast dying, taking, losing his first stock. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Yellow team once again looking so good, as they are the only ones with three stocks apiece right now. Yeah, having to deal with the Pac-Man damage that can come through. It looks like, yeah, Kiwi was waiting for that throw armor to be done as... Where did... Oh, okay, there he is. Snakes up in the heavens. Like, where did he go? <laughs> Pelka just doing a great job of surviving, right? While Pac-Man can do the Pac-Man buttons and play that game, that dash attack is going to get punished. And it looks like Kiwi was not ready for the spin out as a, a great play from Yoda Cage is able to bring them back into this game because Charizard can certainly survive plenty of time as he gets the back throw. I mean, Charizard should survive, but Kiwi and Pelka have been killing Beast, honestly, really early. Like, multiple times. Look at that, he's dead! Already, he's dead from that! This is He's not the stock tank I think he was hoping to be. Not at all. This is four stocks to three, and that is not a healthy stock that Warren is having to deal with. That entire stock was just Pelka going off. He read the Die? switch. He read the air dodge. It was done. He read the attack at a disadvantage. Clean stuff from Pelka because these are type of plays that allow doubles to get a lot more simplified. And in a simplified game state, Snake thrives. Okay, he's not dropping to that final, uh, to that jab finisher as well as Yoda Cage. Yeah, he had to take that stock in order to survive Beast, kind of uh, stuffing, uh, stuffing out their chances, or more or less Pelka being able to close that stock out so early. Finding the up air though, and the forward throw, not, right. not one, impossible. One stock for everybody, uh, but this is where we might actually see the double ledge trapping come in. Uh, if he gets put on ledge once, it's gonna become a absolute nightmare. Oh, oh, I'm a little bit of a miscommunication there. He expected the hole to uh, go into oh. just an F tilt one two. I, uh oh. I don't. I don't think they're being very. Okay, that should be the end. Uh oh. What? What do you mean? Uh, um, I feel like this is playing with your food right there. Yeah. All right. Ends up taking it anyway. A little bit of. I'm not gonna call it sloppy two v one play from Kiwi and Alka. Uh, but are we best? This is best two out of three, right? Oh. Yeah, so here we got... Oh, it is best of five. Yeah, this is a winner semi set. So these two players are in... This is winner side top eight. They got to experiment a little bit, and I don't think this stage was a bad one in the slightest. I think you got everything you wanted to out of the stage. You just needed to respect Nikita a little bit more. I disagree purely because of the fact that Beast was dying so early. If he were on a bigger stage, he wouldn't be dying at 100 multiple times. He died like be three Beast stocks were like at 100, 100, and then what was it, like 50, 60 when he died off the top? I feel so, like that's not a problem with the stage, but a problem with Beast's positioning. And getting your switch red just kind of happens sometimes. That's a player thing, not a stage thing. As we see the character thing come out from Pelka. He's still looking to experiment with that Sora, and um, he's certainly got to be careful with it. <laughs> oof. Yeah, we'll see if this is actually... I, I mean, I can understand the play you're up to. Uh, you want to be practicing this Sora. Uh, and I mean, I do think that Sora, Pac-Man kind of... Uh, I feel like it might have better synergy than Pac-Man Snake. Because it feels like Pac-Man and Snake kind of just... You know, it, it's like doubling down, but it also means that they kind of have the same weaknesses. On a smaller stage like this, especially when Snake's explosions are just everywhere and you can't really, you know, judiciously you know, keep them exactly where you want to, I understand why you might switch to Sora instead. Yeah, it's a different dynamic. And it's something that you're going to have to respect, especially since Ivysaur gets a lot better in a matchup like this, or in a, in a, in a setup like this. Now that you don't have to worry 
about the explosions, you don't have to worry about Snake's presence, then yes, I I Ivysaur's buttons, Ivysaur's ability to play the game just gets a whole lot better. And we see Beast kind of sticking on this Ivysaur now that they have a lot more of just a chance to do things. Okay. Ooh, that, that's going to be a drop stock for uh, for Yoda Cage, but Beast still alive here at 140. This is 140 with the Ivy Sword. He, we're actually not seeing the Zard at all. Damn. Very curious, but I think it's working out. Surprisingly enough, the Ivy Sword is better at surviving than the Zard is, just being a smaller frame. He's not getting hit by kill moves in the same way. Oh, and but switching to Charizard just in time to avoid the kill from that up tilt. The up air does close it out, and Sora's up air. Loki, crazy. But <laughs> Loki or Heike. <gasps> oh, he didn't get the card back because of the low knockback, but he was close enough that he didn't matter. He got back to stage regardless. That was really big for Yoda Cage. And at this point, like, look at this. We're pretty much neck and neck here. Maybe a little bit of a, uh, of a disadvantage for Yellow Team just because of how high percentage uh, Palka is right now. And, oh, and wow. the fact he's off stage. Those Razor Leafs that did everything, but Sora still able to come back with these Sonic Blades, finally dropping the stock. This is a, this is a game that Yoda, Yoda Cage and Beast absolutely need to win, not only for their own their way to keep up in this set as they are down 0-2, but also from a mentality standpoint. You can't go into losers thinking that, man, Pelka just switched to Sora on us and still was able to close out on this double set. Ooh, a bit of a miscommunication right there. And that's actually going to be really important because, you know, yes, that is 68% onto uh, Helka Sora, but nonetheless, he's been surviving pretty decently. Yeah, I love their use of Thundaga here. Th I'm just able to cover so much as Charizard ends up dropping at 150. Suddenly, Kiwi showing off her stock tank abilities, holding on at 121, playing this ledge, immaculately poking out uh, into poking out the offensive options from Yoda Cage and able to recover. Get back to center. The micro spacing. That back air was so close to landing, but in the nonetheless, Pelk is able to make it back to the stage. Oh, but things are actually really bad right now. If you are Kiwi, this is going to be rough. Not only because this is 2v1, but Pac-Man as a character needs time to set up. You know, needs time to grab fruit, to do, you know, any of the kind of traps that we know the character is capable of. And when there are two opponents, it's going to be so hard to find those opportunities. Like, do you go off stage to charge your fruit, and thus for, therefore putting yourself on ledge against two opponents? I like Kiwi's answer right now because it's no it's like all right i'm not gonna charge fruit i'm just gonna play pac-man with these aerials with some of these incredibly and um just some, some of these incredibly quick hitboxes being able to throw out having orange is nice having um, is nice enough in order to force that respect but all she needs right now is hydrant and back and the down smash getting giving her time to get up in that fruit charge her coverage has been so good this 2v1 is incredible no way oh my, no no way how? How has Kiwi been able to do this? This was Just, a 2v1. This was like, they were both the, at it was, zero. It was a 2v1 that Yoda Cage and Beast never got set. PA likes to scrap. PA likes to hold forward and see, put, the, uh, put each other into really tenuous situations. But you can't oh. scrap when Kiwi just is looking like she's seen it all. At the <laughs> same time, though, this is... Absolutely not out of the woods for Kiwi just yet. 134% on Charizard. That up smash almost did it. Another one will absolutely seal the deal. Having to retreat to the legend. That forward air is looking so scary. Back air is still a threat. So many ways that she could die right here. But managing to get a little bit of a uh, pressure alleviated. Key in hand. Let's see what it maybe could produce. Great uh, punish from Beast. Yeah. Absolutely immaculate punish from Beast because he saw. I don't know if that was a missed input. It could have been since Key was on deck. She could have been trying to do the B uh, reverse key throw, instead getting the side B, which a much more punishable, and Beast is not going to let that slide. It could have been, can we get a look at their reactions? Do we have a, uh, usually you can see when somebody miss inputs based on their face when it happens. Uh, you, can, you can see it, look at that little, yeah, that's, that that's, little that's head turn. Yeah, that's the smile, that's like the, you can, uh, Cause that was a great game from Kiwi, being able to show off how good she can play in a situation like that. Like you're down, two, you're down in a 2v1 and just saying, okay, I'm gonna abandon what makes Pac-Man great in singles and just play this poking game. I am so surprised we went back to this stage. 
Um, Great day. Okay. I felt like <laughs> there was part of the reason why they went, why uh, Pelka went off of Snake was actually because of the small nature of the stage. But we actually both returned to the stage on the counter bed and returned to the Snake. Uh, granted, they won on this stage when they did that particular combination, but nonetheless, we'll s I'm curious to see how it's going to pan out. For one thing, uh, Beast not opting to go for Zard. He's been almost exclusively uh, the Squirtle for this beginning of the game, which makes a lot of sense. He hasn't taken almost any damage. 72, not that much, but... Oh, wait, was Shield broke? When? How? Yeah, Who? We're, we're both Do we get watching. a replay on that? Because why? I, I look up and I see Kiwi dazed. But yet, it's Helka, the one that drops the stock first, just trying a little bit uh, to force his way in and, and uh, get that save. Okay. <laughs> just respecting Snake F Smash, as uh, you are certain to do. Yoda Cage holding on and able to Gets destroy the cypher. the cypher. It costs Great. him a stock, but that's a stock trade you will take. Amazing trade. Because now it's five stocks to four. Did What have you been able to recover with side B? Because I know you get a little bit of a jump. I'm not sure if I actually gives you any... Vertical up height, though. first, he might have been able to, but because he upbeat first, they, yeah, that's no. what I'm saying. If he side beat before the upbeat, but it's possible, but it's not something that Yoda Cage is thinking about because it's a great trade. And also, at that situation, you don't want to spend too much time stalling off stage because you want to get back on stage if you are going to die to help out your team. Yeah, on stage is where you know, fair, fair play and on. On stage is where the action is as just missing the F smash punish, Elka having to. Suddenly contest and disadvantage for so much of this game. Yoda Cage holding on and a great switch on Beast Car, being able to protect his teammate. You saw that he ran in and definitely Kiwi started running in also. It was like a chase and then Jukes turns around and starts hitting her. So loving the synergy right now. I think that red team is really cleaning up their play in a way we had not seen in games one and two. And despite the fact that we're switching back to the snake, who is, you know, this is the character that we would normally expect to see be the uh, the centerpiece of uh, this style. It's not enough. This is red team absolutely dominating here. Yeah, forcing Snake into the situation he doesn't want to be in. Snake is great when it comes to trading and being in a lead, being able to be flexible with that. But getting blown up by, by his own grenade to take a stock, and now he's just getting juggled all over the place. Coming down with Nair doesn't work, but Yoda Kid finally dropping his stock at 180. This is going to be, again, Kiwi has to throw out of all the tricks that she has going for her, and that's certainly a good one coming in with that spring, forcing the neutral get up into a jump. No shield has to, uh, has to die to that hydrant. It's yeah. an all stocks oh, game. Great job right there, blocking the actual final hit of the up smash. If you are Pelka, you need to be surviving right now. You are the one who's in the danger zone, and you've been kind of dying pretty early in this game overall. So, if this becomes a 2v1, we've, it has been shown that, you know, Kiwi can definitely play the 2v1, but you don't want to force her into that situation, especially when. Oh, man. Red team is honestly looking really good. She almost drops right there, but not quite enough. <gasps> He almost combo. She almost comboed off that. But finding the uh, the counter fair, no tech. Can the uh, can the stock close out? No. As oh, Kiwi gets oh, all legend no. kills Pelka. Back into a two v one she goes. She's trying to finish what she started before. Waiting on ledge, seeing what happens. Gets that fair, but that time Beast was absolutely ready for it. Up smash out of shield, a frame five reversal. And if Kiwi is going to be playing so much in the air when it comes to 2v1s, using Pac-Man's incredible aerials and relatively low analog to poke away and gain that little bit of space, that's not poking, and that's a killing up smash. Here's a question. Okay. Do they switch back to Sora? No. Genuinely. No. Well, no, no, I, that, in that stock, Snake was getting edge guarded. Snake died really early because Yoda Cage figured out how he actually needed to be uh, to killing him right there. there. So, I mean, on the one hand, I, I, I definitely, yeah, okay, Snake is your main, you know, and so far, actually, the Sora has not proven that it can do it. But yeah, look Huge. at that, that Cypher snipe. He's at 26%. Absolutely. That was absolutely, that ended up deciding the entire game right there. It might end up deciding the entire set if we end up uh, seeing the reverse 3-0 happen, which, considering the way that Beast and Yoda Cage are playing, we very well could. <laughs> oh yeah! Look at his big old smile. Look at him. He's such a happy boy. <laughs> That's a birthday boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a birthday boy with a with a whole stack of presents around him. All of his friends are there clapping to happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, not gonna see the Sora. We will see a bigger stage, and I like how. I definitely. Yeah, I agree with that. This is actually where they won on in game one, I believe. Oh. Uh, and 
having more space to basically do the things that Snake and Kimi want to do. <gasps> Look at that! Look wow, at already damage. just such a difference. Having a little bit more room, having a little bit more space to set up into your proper 2v2 combos. Like, the fact... I, I love it when, when I see that happen, when they manage to combo both opponents at the exact same time. Oh yeah, that's a ton of damage and nothing that they can do about it. A very risky air dodge that goes unpunished, yet the hammer swing, or the wand swing, I guess, comes in from Morton, able to reset this damage. Kiwi has acknowledged her place in this game, because like, okay, Stake's gonna get a ton of damage, everybody's gonna be trading, I'm gonna be just outside of those trade ranges, I'm gonna poke with Fair and put him into Snake's range. That was such a crucial stock take. Yoda Cage being knocked into his second life here, and oh man, Beast also at 125% already, whereas Kiwi has been playing the stock tank role, not been getting touched at all, pretty much. Uh, there's the up smash on the, uh, covering the throw armor. Yoda King Beast holding on slightly, that Nair out of shield. Did he body block that? I might want to, because I think he jumped into the, the up B in order to create a little bit of hit lag, which let uh, Kiwi air dodge it. I could be wrong about that, but it might be fun to check later. Anyway, getting back into this game here, we, another one of Yoda Cage's stocks dropping. Wow, before Yoda Cage was surviving beautifully. This game five though, not being the case. And all of a sudden we have three stocks to five. This is looking really grim for the red team from VA. Yeah, and Kiwi still barely past 100 and it's hard to land definitive hits on Pac-Man. Able to find that up smash, but it's not killing quite yet. Holding on ever so slightly, throwing out the F smash, getting pushed by the water to mess up the spacing though. It's gonna be on Beast. What can he do with this advantage for having Kiwi off ledge? Doesn't go down further and gets hit away by the getup attack. I love how good Kiwi's been playing off of ledge, poking uh, both Beast and Yoda Cage into center stage and into the shenanigans that Snake has been setting up. The grab on the platform gets him out of the up smash. That was so heads up. I love that it's from Kiwi. Just so much awareness on Yellow Team's part right now. And oh, without his team there to help him. Oh, he's over 137% off stage. The bell connects. It's not enough to kill because you could not get out there for the finisher. But nonetheless, if you are Red Team, things are looking so grim. But you're game five. You can't just like give in, give up. You need to fight tooth and nail as much as you can. If you can take these two stocks from the Yellow Team, it's not outside of the realm of possibility. But based on the fact that Morton right now is at 173% and gone. This is our absolute bloodbath. How is Beast? How could he feasibly make this comeback happen? This is, uh, and this is where these two players are. Ooh, that's the way to start it, but there's so much more that needs to be done. Yeah, and another up throw is able to get that stock. He's going to need a lot of back throw back airs and close this out. Looking for the immediate uh, two frame with that down air. Sticky! Dead! No, you had it! <laughs> I said it as a joke at the beginning of the game, uh, the and that sticky, was it! The sticky's on. It's on Charizard now, it should be, because it, it traded off of, unless it fell off, but no, I, he missed the ledge as well. I'm yeah, actually livid. One. Did you see that? Yes. That Kiwi got sticky. Yes. And then he went for the up throw. Yes. That should have been just a, I don't believe he, does he armor through it, actually? Now, now I've been saying that it's a thing. Maybe he armors through it if it uh, detonates at the top. Uh, it might have traded to Kiwi, actually. Yeah, it traded to Kiwi in that uh, in that quick exchange. That's why he didn't detonate it, but he was a little bit too low in order to recover anyway. Yeah. So a little bit of heads up play, a little bit of shaking, but as you mentioned, they're up five stocks to yeah. one. They don't have to stress. They don't have to look for cheesy kills or any sort of like in niche scenarios, they can just look for the stock and look to close it out right then and there with good ledge trapping, which they've been doing all set.